All right, so example four. Nadia creates a town celebrating her joy in mathematics in the year 2025 called Joy Mafia. Okay. The town has 110 people. Oh, my God. And <laughs> Can I just say something real quick? That yeah. Is, like, I did my notes, but I literally did not turn around when I started reading it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, my God. I was featured on the notes. You were featured. <laughs> The town has 110 people and grows continuously by 1.42%. How many <laughs> How many people will be in town in 10 years and 20 years? Also, Lauren is the town mayor. Yes. All right. So, if you flip your notes over to the front, we have to figure out what formula to use. So, there are some things that were not said in the problem. The problem, Davis, is not talking about compound interest, so we know we are not using those two formulas. It did not talk about half-life, so we are not using that formula, okay? So, our two choices are that it could be an exponential growth or decay problem, or it could be a continuous exponential growth problem. It's continuous because it says the word continuous, okay? So that's going to be something to watch out for because the problems will feel the same, um, but that one word makes you use a different formula. So we are going to use y equals PE to the KT. Now, before you flip this over, um, what you'll notice is that these two formulas are very similar. The K value here, even though it's a different variable, Greg, right? Even though it's a different variable. Oh, excuse me, Gregory Marie. Even though it's a different variable, it still represents the rate, okay? So the K value is the growth rate. If you need to add that to your notes, feel free. Okay, so on the notes, I'm gonna say Y equals PE to the KT, the P value, or sorry, the K value and the R value are the same, both are growth rate. Okay, so the town has 110 people to start with. What letter does that represent? P. Okay, uh, it grows continuously by 1.42%. So how do we write that for K? 0 0.0142. Okay. How many people will be in the town in 10 years and 20 years? That's the T value for time. So we're going to do this problem twice, once with 10, once with 20. And then the final amount is the Y. That's what we're going to be solving for. Okay, so we have Y equals PE to the KT. Y equals PE to the KT. And we are ready to plug this into our calculators. So when we get these answers, what are the units of measurement for this problem? People. These are how many people, right? So does a decimal answer make sense? No. So what are we going to do? We're going to round. So 126.783 should round to what? 127. So in 10 years, the town has gone from 110 people to 127 people. And then in 20 years, it has gone to 140, nope, not 47, 146 people. And I just think it's shocking it has not grown faster. A town like Joy Mathia? You're the mayor, you can't say bad things about it. 
Maybe that's why the town's not growing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Okay, next one. Hania creates a rival town across the river called Happy Happy <laughs> Math Town in 2026. The town starts off with only 92 people but has a growth rate of 2.53%. How long will it take for her town to be the same size as Nadia's after 10 years? Nia's mayoral campaign just started, but since she is running uncontested, she's got it in the bag. So we got two different mayors happening. All right. So we're going to say that the p-value, we're going to use the same formula because we are talking, um, it's compared to um, example four. So the two examples are being um, calculated similarly. In theory, I should have written the word continuously in there so that you guys knew for sure to use that formula, but I did not. So we're going to use the same formula. What is the p-value? 92. Uh, what is the K value? 0 0.0253. Do we know what the T value is? No, that's what we're solving for. I don't know why I put a squiggly yet. Okay. T equals, we're not sure. And then what should the ending amount be? Hundred and twenty seven, right? So they're saying when is it the same size as Nadia's town? So and we're actually gonna use the exact value just so we can practice um, doing that for math problems. So we're gonna say that our ending value is one twenty six point seven eight three, but we have to be careful and we have to go back and store that number in our calculators. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back here. I am not going to pull this one down because this is a rounded number. I'm going to go back up in my calculator to where I plugged it in originally. So I've got that highlighted. If you press enter, it will basically plug that in again for you. So I'm getting that decimal back on my screen. And I'm going to store this as A or Y. I guess we could store it as Y. Okay. So to do this problem, what should I be writing? So I got my Y, I've got 126.783 equals <clears throat> 92E to the point 0253T. Okay, what should I do? <laughs> Divide by 92. So I'm going to go ahead and just say this is A divided by 92 because it's a little bit easier to write. Did you guys all store it as A? Yeah. And then I want to get to the T. But before that, I have to get rid of that base E. How do I get rid of that? I LN each side. So LN and E are um, inverse operations. That means they cancel each other out. So I have LN of the number that I stored as A divided by 92 equals 0 0.0253T. And how do I solve for t? And divide that decimal over to the other side. So I have ln of a divided by 92. And then I'm dividing that by 0 0.0253. So 12.676. What's the unit of measurement on this problem? Years, right? We're asking how many years it took. So this is years. Is it okay to have decimals if we have years? Yes portion of a year definitely makes sense. Portion of a person doesn't make as much sense. 
It's true. It's true. And some people are shorter, and we all know that short people are worth less. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and really tall people are, like, extra. Like, that dude's really tall. He's, like, 1.3 people. <laughs> all right, next one. Eliana starts a secret organization called Math Rules Science Drools, which doubles its membership in five years. What was its growth rate? And here, this is another one that was continuous growth. I just did not put that in the problem. The ones um, in your practice assignment will say continuous. I just, in the notes, apparently did a bad job. The funny thing is I tried to make it so that um, I had students in my examples from both my second and my third period. So I was like trying to picture my seating, like where you guys sit and make sure. And I basically only picked people from this period on accident. It was not intentional, but it was, but that's what it happened. So yeah, but she was the only one, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> the rest of them were all from this class. Um, all right. So we have, um, some initial value, we're not sure what it is because they didn't say. But we do know that it doubles, and we know that we're talking about the membership in five years. So we do know the T value is five. Um, what variable are we trying to solve for? The K value, yeah, because it says what was the growth rate. So that's, we're looking for the K value. Okay. So in problems like this, where you know you are supposed to solve the growth rate, but they did not give you an actual value for P, that means you should just choose a value for P and it doesn't matter what you choose, as long as you make your Y value double of that. So it doesn't matter. So what number should be used for P? Two. Did you say six? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Let's do, let's do six. Let's do six. I'm sorry. I'm not rejecting you, but you are mayor. And so we have to spread the wealth a little bit. Okay. So if P is six, then what does Y have to be? 12, because we have to double. Okay. So it doesn't matter what you choose, but you do have to follow what they say. It says it doubles the membership in five years. Okay. All right. So if we start writing this out, we're going to say 12 equals our P value, which is six E to the K times five. And then after that, we can go ahead and start solving the problem. So what do we do here? Divide by six. So we have two equals. Yeah, I'll go ahead and write 5K just so it doesn't look quite so weird. And then what should we do? We should L on each side, or you could Tootsie Roll. Tootsie Roll's not wrong. So the LN and the E cancel, and then we get LN of 2 equals 5K. And divide the 5. Good. So K is approximately... There we go. Can kind of see it? LN2 divided by 5.138, well, 0.139. Okay, now 0.139 is not the answer because we have to think about how the question was phrased and what we normally do with the numbers in this context. So it says, what was the growth rate? And the growth rate is normally the letter R. We're using K for this formula, but it's normally R. And it's normally written as what? A percentage. So we have to think about this decimal being written as a percentage. So what percentage would that be? It'd be 13.9%. 13.9% growth rate. Okay. So you just have to be careful um, when you're doing your growth rate problem. Sometimes you need to find the K value so that you can use it in another problem. And if we're going to use it in another problem, we're going to leave it as the 0.139. Mm -hmm. And we would actually store it in our calculator so we could have that perfect decimal. But if this is the point of the problem and this is all we want in the final answer, then we do have to convert it back to a percentage. Okay. All right. That's the end of the notes. All right, so number three says a chain of retail computer stores opened two stores 
in its first year of operation. That will meet. After eight years of operation, the chain consisted of 206 stores. The growth rate of the stores was continuous. What was the growth rate? So if we look at our notes, we know that it did not say compound interest, so we are not using those formulas. It did not say half-life, so we are not using that one. So again, we've narrowed it down to being exponential growth and decay or continuous exponential growth. Which one are we going to use for number three? So I continuous growth because the growth was continuous. Okay, so we're going to use y equals pe to the kt, and what variable are we solving for? K, what was the growth rate? That means we're solving for K. All right, so what, um, what are the other letters then? We have P has to be something, Y, T. What number should we plug in for P? <laughs> well, this time we don't get to choose because they told us. So you would only choose if they, instead of telling you an amount, they said like double it or triple it or whatever. But this one tells you. So what do we start with? Two. two. We start with two. What do we end out with at the end of the eight years? 206. And then what's the amount of time? Eight years. Eight years. Okay. So let's go ahead and plug these numbers in. We have 206 equals 2e to the k times eight. So what do we do? Divide by two. All right, and then we LN, good. So now we have LN of 103 equals 8K. And then what do we do? Divide by eight. So the K value is 0.579. And so what is the growth rate? 57.9%. That's a, that's a pretty nice business there. You're making a lot of money. Okay, now the next question says predict the number of stores in the 12th year of operation. So that means we have to store this K value because we are gonna use it in the next problem. So for the next problem, we still have that same starting value of two we no longer know what the end amount is. That's what we're solving for this time. We, um, we do know that the time is 12 years. And for the K value, we're gonna use LN of 103 over eight, which we have stored in our calculator. So we have kept some information from the problem, but we are changing some information. Okay, so we have y equals two times e to the 0 0.579 times 12 for t. And then instead of typing that decimal, make sure you put in that, that value that you stored for K. When we do these problems where we store a number and then use that stored number to do the rest of the problem, um, that means that we are completing the problem without intermediate rounding. And that sometimes um, in problems, they'll say to round as you go, and sometimes they'll say complete the problem without intermediate rounding. 
One of the reasons I'm showing you guys how to do this is because some of you guys are going to go on to calculus next year, and in calculus, the policy is no intermediate rounding ever. Okay, so I want to get you guys used to that. All right, so once we complete this problem, we get 2,090.672, and what's our units of measurement? Fours. So can we have decimals? No. Okay, so what are we going to say? 2,091 stores. How many years will it take for there to be 1,000 stores in operation? So what do we do? We do not subtract a thousand from that. <laughs> so the P is still two. Do we know what the Y is? One thousand. Uh, do we know the T value? Nope, that's what we're solving for. And we still know that the K value is the same. It's what I stored, 0.579. So we have Y equals PE to the KT. And what should we do? Divide by two. And then what do we do? Tootsie roll. So if we tootsie roll this one, how do we write that? So log base E, which is ln of 500 equals You don't need the parentheses. I don't know why I wrote this. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and divide by that decimal. But remember, when you type it in, we're going to divide by the number we stored as K. And what are the units of measurement? years. So decimals are okay. All right. Um, before you start the next one, I'm not going to help you do the problem, but I do want to point something out. When you go on to number six, they start talking about half-life. So we already know what formula to use. And they tell you that the half-life is three years, so they're giving you the H value. And then they say how many months would it take for you to lose eight milligrams, so you're solving for a T value. And if you notice, these are two different units of measurement. Okay, so you have two options for how you handle the problem. You can use H equals three, and then you'll know that when you solve for T, it's going to give you a number in years. And you'll have to take that answer and multiply it by 12. That's one option. The other option is to, instead of thinking of this as three years, you could say that's actually the same as 36 months. And then you could say your H value is 36 months. And then when you solve for T, your T would also be months. Okay, so just pay attention to that. That threw off a lot of people last period um, because they weren't paying attention that the units had changed. Okay, all right, so go ahead and get started with that. The answers are on the board. Um, don't worry about one and two for now. We will do those before the end of the period. Okay, all right. So for number one, it says, are we ready? says, a bacterial culture doubles every two hours. If the culture started with 14,000 bacteria, how many bacteria will be present in five hours? So which formula are we using? We are using 
Yeah, growth and decay. And are we going to use the plus or the minus? Use the plus. We're going to use the plus because it's going to grow. So we're going to say y equals p times 1 plus r to the t. Okay. So did they give us a value for p? 14,000. Okay. P is 14,000. That's your starting amount. They tell us that it doubles. So did they give us y? It's 28,000, so I'm going to write y equals 28,000, okay? Um, and they gave us t, right? How often does it double? Every two hours. So what we're going to do first, I know that it says 5, so we're going to use that in a second. But what we're going to do first is we're going to use this p and this y and this t, and we're going to use that to solve for r, okay? So if you guys see in the problem, they didn't really give you an r value to use. And there's a couple different ways to do this problem. This, this way, I think, is a little bit easier to understand than the way I've explained it before. So if we look at this, we're going to have 28,000 equals 14,000 times 1 plus r to the second. So this time, our t value is not in terms of years. The t value for this problem is actually in terms of hours. Okay. So we need to undo stuff until we can solve for r. So what could we move over first? 14,000, so we'll divide that over. So 28 divided by 14 is two, so that makes sense, right? It doubles, so it gives us a two. I'm going to go ahead and move my math over here. Two equals one plus r squared. Okay, what's the next thing we can undo? The squared, right? How do we undo that? Square root. Okay. So we're going to say 1 plus r. Now, typically in problems, we would say our square root has to be a plus or a minus, right? Mm -hmm. In this problem, our growth should be increasing, not decreasing, mm -hmm. right? Because this problem is going up. So I'm going to say that I should only use the positive version of the square root. I'm not going to write plus minus because minus in this problem in the context we're using it would not make sense. Okay. How do I solve for r? Subtract 1. So I have r equals the square root of 2 minus 1. And so that means our r is approximately 2.5. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and store that in our calculator. So go ahead and store it. I'm storing mine as R. Okay, now we are ready to go back and finish the problem because now we have that R value. Okay, so now we get to do the part where it says how many bacteria will be present in five hours. So that means we don't know what the Y value is. We're going to use the, the same p-value that we had before. Now we know that our r is 0.414. I stored that as r. And what's our time this time? Five. Okay. So 14,000, 1 plus r to the 5. And what are the units? Bacteria, does a decimal make sense? Probably not. With, with living things, we typically would round to a whole number. So I'm going to say 79,196 bacteria. Okay. How long until there will be 20,000 bacteria? So I need to say, we know what our ending amount should be. That's 20,000. We're keeping our initial value the same. One plus the number I stored is R to the T. Okay. So what do I do first?
Divide the 14,000 So we have 20 over 14. Ten over seven. Does it make a nice decimal or is it not a nice decimal? Not a nice. Okay, we'll leave it as ten over seven. Um, we can go ahead and add this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one plus r, and then this decimal I'm gonna go ahead and store in my calculator. Okay. Um, you can store it as any letter. I'm just gonna go ahead and store it as a. So this equals 1.414 to the T. Okay. So how do I solve for T? I have to log. So, and what's the base of my log going to be? 1.414. So I'm going to log base 1.414 the left side. I'm going to log base 1.414 the right side and those cancel, and so I have t is log base 1.414 of 10 over 7, and so I'm going to make sure when I type that in, I use that a value that I stored. What are the units? Hours. Hours. Okay. How are you guys doing working through the packet? Okay. Do we want to do another one together? Sure. Okay, what number should we do? And then you're making sure when you divide by that 0.266, you're actually using that value for K in your calculator that you had scored. Because if you use a rounded answer in the middle of a problem, you're going to get something wrong. Your decimals will be off. Five point four eight. Did we get that? What's our unit? Yeah, what are the units? It's not dollars. It says when. It's going to be months or years. Look look at the original problem. So the stock is per month, but what does the original problem say? Years. So this is years. So the stock is valued per month, but the amount of time passing is years. All righty.